Hi everyone, it's Paul from List Designer. Today we're going to be designing and printing our own custom corner bumpers that you can see here. I just want to give a shout out to PCB Way, the sponsor of today's video. Whether you require PCB etching and assembly, CNC machining or 3D printing in a range of exotic materials, PCB Way has you covered. They offer fast worldwide delivery, low minimum order quantities on many of their popular services and huge savings when ordering in bulk. So head over to PCBWay.com today and see what they have to offer. I'm someone who is quite clumsy. I'm always walking into the corner of things and scraping the sides of my body. And in our house, we've got these banisters and we've got these moldings uh, on the top of the banisters and they are very sharp corners. I don't know why they've been designed like this, but basically this has caused me quite a lot of damage to my body uh, over the years of living in this house. Previously, we were using what you've, you've probably seen these before, these like kind of corner bumper, like baby bumpers. Because of the geometry of this uh, banister molding here, there wasn't really enough surface area for the double-sided sticky tape to really get purchase onto it and hold it on. And also what I found was that I could stick it in place, but when I walked against it, it would just kind of brush off. So I wanted to design something that could be held in place with some string. I did also think about just sanding the corners of these, but it would have ruined the look of this oak staircase. So I've gone with this 3D printed design. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a picture of the profile of this uh, mold in here. We're gonna bring it into Fusion 360 and we're gonna design it to scale so it will fit nice and flush with this molding design. And then we're gonna 3D print it as well. So here we are in Fusion 360. If you see any of these functions in the top here, that are not in your menu that's just because I've pinned them and if you open up the menu you click on the three dots and you've got the option to pin it to the toolbar it's a very nice little feature that will make uh, it much quicker to access the functions that you use all the time let's go ahead and add the image that we just took as the canvas so to do that we will go to insert and then we want to insert a canvas. Now we want to insert it from the computer because I've just downloaded it from my phone. So I've named it banisters, we'll just add this. And now we want to choose the face. You can put it on anyone, it doesn't really matter, but I'm just gonna put it on here. And then we can click on OK. So now we've added the image as the canvas, we want to go ahead and calibrate it. So if we open this menu here, we can right click on banister and then we can click on calibrate. And then what you want to do is you just wanna select two points and then you want to define that distance so you you could i mean you could define one millimeter if you want but for me it's just easier to just do 10 millimeters so i'll draw this point here and this point here and we'll say that that is 10 millimeters we'll click on ok and you can see it's now expanded the image to the correct size and if we go ahead and if we draw on this face here i probably placed it like here to here so we're like 9.98 so obviously you can get as precise as you need with this, but for this design here, it just needs to fit roughly around this profile shape of this banister. So that's great, we've now got it calibrated. Let's go ahead and start sketching. So we want to create a sketch. We'll choose the face that is the same as the canvas. I just drew mine freehand roughly around the shape outline and it turned out very, very good. We will just draw a line around this profile. If you click, and then while still holding the mouse, if you move it, you'll then create a curve. And then again, if you click and hold it, we'll just curve around this bottom profile. So we've traced around this contour and now we can go ahead and we can draw in the outer contour. So I really want this to be quite nice and bulbous. So I want it to be quite thick and padded. Come out like this, I think, and maybe come like this sort of fat bulbous selection here. I'm sure that I want the string line to be kind of in line with this groove here. We'll draw in four millimeter circles should be fine. And we can just position this roughly where we think is good. And then we'll bring up the trim command by pressing T on the keyboard. For some reason it automatically deletes what I want, which isn't the case. So we'll bring up that trim command and we can just trim this. Now we've got these sharp edges that we don't really want. So we'll bring up the fillet command in a sketch. We'll click on these two points here just to round it off a little bit and we'll make them one millimeter. There we go. So we've finished the sketch, right? That looks better. Okay. Let's get rid of the banister. Now let's go ahead and create a new sketch. And if we come to the top view, so we want to draw the path that we want this profile to follow around. It's very simple to do. Click at the start point and we'll just come out by 30 millimeters and then we'll do a 90 degree turn to 30. Now, if I do a sweep command, I'll show you, it's going to create a sharp edge because I've got a sharp corner here. So we can bring up the sweep command or you can go to create and click on sweep. 
and it tells you what it needs. It needs a profile and then it needs a path. So if I choose these, you can see I've basically recreated exactly what I've got on my wooden banister at the moment, which is not very helpful. We can press OK because we do want this sweep, but we just want to change the path. So if we come to sketch four, which is the path, we'll double click it to open it up. And now if we bring up the fillet command in the sketch, click on the corner there, eight millimeter. So we've got a nice rounded corner. If we click on finish sketch, we'll bring up the sweep command because now we've added uh, extra geometry. We'll bring up the path. We'll click on that extra rounded fillet that we added to the path. You can see it's now created a very nice round buffer for this corner. The problem is though, is that the outer contour uh, is, is rounded, but also the same for the inner. I have got a sharp edge on the, uh, the wooden banister. So I need to cut inside of this to make it sharp. And the way that we do that is very simple. We, we go back to the original sketch and then we will just close off this, this inner geometry here. So now we've created another profile. We can click on finish sketch and now we will create a new sketch on the same plane as what we drew the path on. And now we will draw another path and we will draw it originally how we had it, which is with a sharp 90 degree corner. So we can finish the sketch and now we can bring back the original sketch and we'll do the sweep command again. So we'll choose this inner profile. We'll choose the 90 degree path, and it knows that you want to cut it because it can see it's moving it into some body. And there we go. So we have now successfully cut the sharp corner. All I did next was just finish it off with some, you know, just some fillets. I mean, you could, you could like fillet this, although because of the way it is, it's going to maybe act up a little bit because of the geometry, but you can kind of, you can get the idea of what I did here. You can just kind of round off all of these edges as much as you want. So you can see we've now completed the corner buffer for this banister. Now we want to go ahead and 3D print it. So we just printed the corner bumper. Uh, I'm just using some ABS like resin 2.0 for this and it fits very nicely onto the corner of the molding. But the issue that I've got now is that, as you can see, it's pretty hard. And while it does smooth out the corner of the, uh, the molding on the banisters, it still is quite hard to bump into. And uh, that's where these two balls come into play. So I was researching flexible resins and I come across the Resi One brand. I was chatting to them and asking them what is uh, the best resin in their range for something that is flexible, you know, close to like this memory foam style stuff. They said, check out the F80 and the F69 in their range. And they sent me these two bottles for free to uh, do some experiments with. So first of all, I printed with the F69, and this is my first time printing flexible resins. I haven't even printed any flexible resins on my FDM printers either, and this stuff is really cool. Uh, it's got a sure rating of, I think, I think it's about 50 or 60 sure rating, the F69. So as you can see, it's still pretty hard, but it is pliable. It does have some flexibility to it, and it will just come back to its original shape. So this is really cool. Uh, and I'm gonna think about adding maybe some of this and mixing it with a more rigid resin as well to try and add a little bit of elasticity to it. And actually, funny enough, I was actually 3D printing a new hot end mount for my Vorum and I was using some heat resistant resin and it snapped because it's very, very brittle. So I think I might actually experiment and add some F69 with it in the future and see what the results are like. So next I wanted to try the F80 and this is completely different. This is very close to exactly what I want. It's like a soft silicone rubber. You can see it's really squidgy and uh, it will just bounce back into its shape. So I think this is perfect for what I need it to be. Now printing with these resins is a little bit different compared to more traditional resins that I've been printing with. Resi 1 are very helpful and they give you full instructions and they also give you config files for Chitu Box uh, to set up your supports and those type of things. I haven't had many issues with printing with these resins. The only time I had a failure was on my first print and it's because I did not warm up the resin and I've discovered that warming up the resin is definitely the biggest impact to print quality that I can see when using these type of resins. And usually if you get failures, it's probably because the resin is too cold and therefore it's too viscous. When you first pour these out of the bottle at kind of like room temperature, and here in the UK, it's around about 18, 19 Celsius. Um, it is quite thick and viscous. And what I do is I just get a very hot 
a bowl of water and I just leave them in there for about 10 20 minutes and the viscosity really does reduce making it much easier to print so if you do get hold of flexible resins and they are viscous definitely heat it up beforehand it really does help another alternative is you can get little heaters that go into the 3d printer and also you can get little heater bands that you can wrap around the vat in your 3d printer um, that can heat up the resin my next resin printer I would definitely make sure that I've got some sort of heated chamber inside of it because yeah it is a little bit annoying having to each time you print it you've got to pour out the resin because obviously it's reduced in temperature i need to put it back in the bottle heat it up and then print it again so i printed off a uh, batch of these let's go ahead and install them now and let's uh let's see what they're like These turned out great and I think I probably saved myself about 10 bruises a year on my body from putting these on all of the corners on this banister. Thank you for tuning in and thank you to Resi1 for sending me these resins. I'll put links in the description below to check out their store if you're interested. That's it for today, catch you all later.